Hi there guys and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to triple boot an Apple Mac to load OS X Sierra, Linux Fedora and Windows 10. Cracky. This is by far the best way to triple boot your Apple Mac. There's no hybrid MBR GPT partitions like is normally used with Boot Camp. All the operating systems are installed on the standard GPT disk into different standard partitions. And for this tutorial, we're going to need the following files. We're going to need a Fedora Workstation ISO. We're going to need the Fedora Media Writer software. We're going to need an ISO of Windows 10. And we're going to need a file called Rufus. When we prepare the Windows 10 files, we are going to need access to a Windows machine or we're going to have to use a virtual machine within OS X. So you'll find these files, if you type in Fedora download, you'll see here the first thing that comes up is um, download Fedora workstation. So just click on there and click this green link here and download the latest version of Fedora. You can find some other versions here, you can find some beta versions here, um, but I'd recommend to use the stable one. And you can find some Fedora spins here which are basically they're just um, versions of Fedora with different desktops. So if you prefer one of those, download that. You're going to need the Fedora Media Writer software. So if you click on the download beta release and scroll down to the bottom, you'll find there there's the Fedora Media Writer for OS X. So you just download that. And for Windows 10, just type in Windows 10 download and go down to the Microsoft website where it says Windows 10 ISO Microsoft. You'd click on here and just select Windows 10. Click confirm and just choose your install language. And there you have a 32 or 64 bit. We'd need the 64 bit, so you just click on download there and get that. And the last bit of software we'd need is Rufus USB. So just type in Rufus USB into Google and click onto the first website here and scroll down and download the latest version of Rufus, which at the moment making this video is 2.11. So once you've got all your files, just leave them on the desktop. And the next thing we're going to have to do is to shrink our OS X partition to make room for these other operating systems. So just open Disk Utility and click on your Apple hard drive. Mine's a 500 gig drive here. And click onto Partition. As you can see at the moment, my OS X is 500 gigs and I've got 36 gigs already used up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on the plus sign here and again. And that split my hard drive into three. So it's equally proportioned it, but I want to have 300 gigs for my OS X. So I'm going to move that one to 300. And this one here I'm going to use for my Windows, and I only want that to be 60. So I'm going to choose 60 for here, or as near as I can get it to. And that's going to leave 139 gigs over here, which I'm going to use for Fedora. So I'm going to label these while we're here. Label that one Fedora. And label this one Windows. And I'm going to format them both in MS-DOS FAT. And then just click on Apply. And that's done. You can just click back on Partition. And we can see here, we've got a, a roughly 300 gig OS X partition, 60 Windows and 138 gig Fedora. So now we need to create our Fedora USB stick. So for that we just need to put a USB stick into our computer. As you can see, mine's in now here. And we want to open this file here, the Fedora Writer. And then click on this file again. And open. And we want to choose custom image at the bottom here. And select our live ISO, which is this one on the desktop here. And click open. And then click on create live USB. And you'll have a drop down box here. So make sure you're selecting the correct USB. Mine's a 64 gig USB stick I'm going to use for this. And then just click on write to disk. Pop in your password. This will just take a minute or two to write. OK, and now we've finished writing the image. You can click on close and then close the media writer software. And if I pull the USB stick out and push it back in, 
you'll see it come up on the desktop and there we have our bootable USB flash drive okay so now it's time to restart the computer and we're going to have to switch across to the other camera for the install of Fedora and as it reboots we'll just hold down the alt key and here you'll see a blue Fedora sign in the middle saying Fedora Media um, it's not focusing very well on the camera but you'd select that one and then select the top one start Fedora workstation live and that boots us into a live ISO Fedora and we just want to click on to install to hard drive here and then on this part here we just choose our language and then the next part here installation destination let's click on to here and make sure the Apple hard drive is selected as you can see it says 256 megabytes free um, that's absolutely fine because we'll click our configure partitioning then click on to done and this bottom bit here unknown if we go on to there that's our partitions that we just created in OSX um, this bottom one here the 130 gig one that was the one I was going to use for Fedora so now I actually need to delete this partition delete and so now if I click back on here that's gone and I want to put this here onto standard partition that's important and then at the top there's a button that says click here to create them automatically and that will create some partitions automatically so just click onto that but there are some changes we're going to have to make here um, it's very important that we don't have this set here, the boot EFI, because that is actually, if we look here, that is actually our main drive for OSX. So that's been, that's done incorrectly. So we just want to select the top Fedora installation and click on the minus onto that one. And don't worry, it hasn't removed it from here at all. It's only removed it from the new installation at the top. And then we're going to remove this directory here that says home and also delete the partition with the forward slash but leave the forward slash boot and the swap partition now click on to add and now we're going to add the boot EFI mount point and we'll make that 200 now you can see we've now got our boot EFI and now we're going to add another partition just the root and if you just put 999999 that will just pretty much use up the rest of the space add mount point so as you can see now we've got 120 gigs for our for our main drive and we've got an 8 gig swap partition and we've got our EFI and our boot partitions here so now we can click on to done and this is just a summary of what's going to be done um, that's all fine so click accept changes and there's no errors here so we know that's fine so now we can just click on begin installation and this is where we can create our root password and click done and also just create a user and now we just wait for the installation to finish Okay, and our installation's nearly finished and now it's complete so just click on to quit and now we can just restart the computer and we can just remove the USB stick as well now and hold down alt again and now you can see when we hold down the alt there's a Fedora logo in the middle so if we click onto there it brings us to the Fedora loader and just click enter on the top one and none of the other ones will actually do anything and there's Fedora installed on our MacBook Pro if you see here there's actually no network connection at the moment um, there's no Wi-Fi available and if you have a MacBook Pro Retina like me you'll also have no Ethernet port. 
So what you'll have to use is a USB to Ethernet adapter. Now I wouldn't suggest using one of the Thunderbolt to Ethernet Apple adapters. There's much cheaper alternatives available that you can pick up for a few pounds or a few dollars. So I've just plugged mine in now and you can see here now there's a network connection. So now we have a network connection. Let's open a terminal window and do an update. So just click on terminal and enter the following command sudo space yum space upgrade and this will start the update process just let it run through and if it asks you any questions just answer yes or no and let it update um, it'll take a little bit of time obviously all this bit here is quite speeded up and when it's finished just um, reboot back into OSX and then we're ready to start installing Windows Okay, so now we've rebooted. Um, this next step needs to be actually done in Windows. Um, and I've rebooted to Mac OS X because I'm going to use a virtual Windows using Parallels Desktop. But you could use a real Windows machine or do the same way I do. The steps will be exactly the same. Okay, so once booted into Windows, you'll need the Windows 10 image that you downloaded earlier and also the Rufus 2.11. As you can see I've got my USB flash drive plugged in and so the first thing to do is to start Rufus and at the top you see the USB device is selected if you had more than one USB device in you could select it from the drop down menu here click on this button to select the disk image choose your Windows 10 image after you've put the image in go to the partition scheme and click the drop down box and choose GPT partition for UEFI if you don't have this it will not boot on the Mac well it will boot but then you won't be able to install it onto the partition of your Mac hard drive don't select this before you choose the ISO image because when you choose the ISO image as you can see I'll choose it again it defaults back to that so after you've chosen the ISO image then choose this GPT partition scheme and once you've done that just click on start and it will prepare your USB and basically just wait for it to finish and so it's finished so now we can just click on to close and then we just need to make sure the USB stick is in our Mac and restart the Mac holding down the alt and at the boot selection window you'll see on the far right hand side the orange one it actually says EFI boot and not Windows but that's your Windows installation and now it's just the standard Windows installation um, just fill in all the details and when you get to the partitions choose your Windows partition, mine's num partition number 5 um, and then click on delete, click OK and then click on the unallocated space and then click next and then just sit back and let Windows install OK so now with Windows 10 installed we can remove the USB stick and reboot the Mac holding down the Alt and now you see the boot manager has four choices it has OSX, Fedora, EFI boot which is Windows and the OSX recovery partition OK, now in OSX, the last thing we need to do is just to download the bootcamp drivers. And this will give us all the Windows drivers we need for our Windows 10 installation. So go to the Applications folder, and then to Utilities, and then click on Bootcamp Assistant. OK, and if you see this error, don't worry about that. Just click OK, and then untick Create a Windows 10 or later install disk, and just make sure download the latest Windows support software from Apple's checked. Um, choose your USB stick, um, click continue. So once this process is complete, restart the computer into Windows and then run the setup file on the Bootcamp USB and that will install all the drivers you need. So guys, there we have it. So now our Apple Mac can boot OS X, Fedora and Windows 10. Anyway guys, if you like this video and found it useful then please hit the like button and if you want to see more videos from me then why not subscribe to the channel. Whatever you're up to guys for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.